So today on the podcast, we discuss how Appian Media began, a good origin story, and why we decided to start a nonprofit company to make Bible media. Welcome to En-ROADS, where we talk about the why of Appian Media and how you can use the technology of today to spread the timeless message of the Bible. Learn more about us and watch our free video series at appianmedia.org. Here we are. Let's season talk origin one, stories. Episode one. This is an yeah. origin story right here. Yeah, it is. It's happening. This is how it all got started. Yeah. I'm Stu, so I guess we should probably start with introductions. That's a good place to start. Um, so uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Appian Media. And my background is really in video production, uh, specifically in like large corporate uh, productions and reality TV. So, mm -hmm. you know, as we get into this, you'll see how our backgrounds kind of add to uh, our mixture. So, yes. who, who are you? I am, I'm still trying to figure that out. I am Craig D. Hutt. You would call me a freelance video producer. I would say primarily I'm a coffee lover who also happens to shoot video. You're twitching a little bit right a now. A little bit. If you're watching no on the YouTube channel, you can see him kind of back and forth. With me, but I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I love creating content and telling stories, and I love getting people excited about things uh, through visuals and visual media. So. That's me in a nutshell. You know, and when we talk about origins, um, it's always – it's fun for us to look back on what uh, what we've been able to do over the past three years. But it's honestly a question that we get a lot from people. Yes. It's like, why did you do this? Or, you know, how did you get started? They want to know uh, where this began. And uh, it had humble beginnings. It you know, did. It actually – you know, I think the story of how we met – is, is yeah. really quite interesting. It began a uh, very similar fashion that happens with you, I'm sure, where people go, oh, you do video. I know someone who does uh, video yes. as well. You must be friends. Um, yes. And so it's actually one of my brothers who said, I know this guy named Stuart. He happens to do what you do and actually just recently moved to Indianapolis and my family had, had just done the same. And he said, you guys should get together for coffee. And of course, then I went, yes, let's mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. And so we did. It took a few months and we eventually just I sat down and started talking shop. Yeah. I think when we look back on it, that was kind of, for me, I, I think, where did we, when did we actually meet for the first time? I remember we met at church. Christmas. Christmas time at yep. church. And then... Uh, it was several months after that before we actually sat down and had coffee. But I, I think back to the fact that first meeting that you and I had, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. It I'm started with you complaining. Let's actually, uh, at yeah, least it, it did. somewhere early on in that conversation, well, which yep. I am so glad <laughs> that you complained. I, yeah, and I think back to like, um, you know, before before we met, uh, I was teaching Bible classes, and that was kind of the catalyst for it because I was looking for video content, which this is like 2016, 2015. Uh, so um, people weren't using video that much in, in Bible studies and Bible classes. And I was trying to use YouTube videos, and uh, I couldn't find anything worthwhile to show to the class. But I knew that the class was going to be more engaged when they saw a video. Yeah, and so that's how we're wired, right? It is how we're wired. Yeah. And we. Um, I can remember sitting on the couch for hours just looking for a good video. And so then you and I got together and knowing your background, that's, you know, pitched the idea of why not make our own videos? Yep. And we talk about it like what it was, a crazy idea uh, yeah. where you said, I can't find it anywhere. So let's make it ourselves. We need to go over to Israel and do it ourselves. And it's like, right. that's, right. that's nonsense. Yeah. How do you think we could pull that off? You know, and things just kind of, man, just kind of snowballed from there. It, it did. And, and, you know, I'm so glad that it did. But, um, you know, I think back of how naive we were because <laughs> we asked for such a small amount of money to do it. And we had I don't had know about no you. I had never gone any farther out of our own country than like Canada. Okay. And now we're talking about flying over the ocean right. to a place neither of us had ever been. Right to right. do something on a scale that none of us had ever done. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, yes. So let me ask you, um, you know, and I know our personalities. I, I'm very like 
crazy. I'll, I mean, like, I just have all kinds of wild ideas. But in a good way. Mm, yeah, I guess so. Usually. But, um, you know, you're very – everything's thought out. Everything is, is planned. Why in the world did you say yes to a guy that you'd only met a couple times who had this wild idea – uh, that got us to where we are now. I I don't know if there was a moment where I said, oh, this, this is what I've been looking for. But that's really what happened is you came with a prospect of doing something that I had been looking for, putting two of the things that I love the most together. I love sharing the gospel with other people. And I love creating video and telling good stories with media. And you had pitched an idea and it was the first time that I went, those two things can work together. Of course we have to try this. Mm -hmm. And you are right. I am very analytical. I am very like, if I'm going to spend more than $20 on something, I spend three months researching, mm -hmm. to, you know, and, and you said, let's do this crazy thing. And this is more than a $20 purchase. This <laughs> is crowdfunding mm -hmm. in order to spend tens of thousands of dollars to take us somewhere that most of us had never been, but to do something that I believed was desperately needed. Yeah. So I, I, I agree I'm completely. thrilled. Yeah, I'm no, thrilled with it. I am. And, and I think back a lot to like just our makeups, just the two of us and how if you – uh, were a lot more like me, this wouldn't work. Right. And if I were a lot more like you, this wouldn't work. Right. And just, I mean, you know, we talk about God's providence when we talk about Appian Media, but that was one of those things. Yeah. And then we started adding more people to the team. Um, let's talk about the makeup of the team, because I think it's very important that people understand who is on this team, who makes this product. Yeah, this is not something, like you said, that you could have ever done by yourself or I could have ever done by myself. And and the way this team has come together, I firmly believe was directed, um, was, was, was just a providential, really. Um, my brother Jeremy had taken a trip to Israel uh, the fall before this started to coalesce with a guy named Barry Britnell. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy came over saying, came back over and saying, uh, like what this did to my study and what this done has done to my, my understanding of the Bible. You need to talk to Barry. He's the guy that you should, you know, logistics. He's going to help with all of that. So we connected with him originally with no intention of putting this guy on camera. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And I, I just that. talked to him for hours and hours on the phone. Um, it became very clear very early that instead of calling Barry up every 30 minutes while we were in, over in Israel, like, what are we doing? Just bring him along, yeah. get him in front of the camera. What are we doing here? Right. I don't know what I'm doing. I love the story of how Jet became part of this team. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. So the Kickstarter campaign's running. Yeah. At that point, we had settled on Barry and Jeremy as our hosts, mm -hmm. and you and I, and that was- There was four of us. There four of us, Total. and that was it. Yeah. You know, and we're going to try to do what we can. But we quickly realized, hey, if we could reach a little extra money, if we could reach one of these stretch goals, we'd really like to bring another person with us. Mm -hmm. We get this message from this guy named Jet. I had never heard of him. He he lives fairly close to us. Um, and he simply says, uh, I can't believe I'd not heard of this before, but I love what you're doing. If you ever need any help, just let me know. And yeah. that was it. Right? Yeah. And then you and I said, let's meet this guy for coffee. Right. I, you know, and I think uh, when we first met him, I was more hesitant than you were because I was like, oh, man, this is our baby. This is our thing that we've kind of started to, to build. Yeah. And I don't want to start letting people in willy nilly. We have to really vet this guy to see if this is legit. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think we both walked away from that. 30-minute, yeah. hour-long coffee meeting going, okay, this guy needs to come. Yeah, he sat across the table from us, and he didn't, like I thought he might, he didn't sit there and say, I'm qualified for this because X, Y, Z. Yeah. He is overqualified. Right. What he did was, do you guys understand what you have here? Yeah. This could be huge. And he was seeing the vision right. that you and I had from the very beginning. It wasn't just one series about the life of Jesus. It was, we would like it to be so much more. And he sat across the table from us and said, I see it. 
And I think everybody that we've included on this team thus far has had that same vision. Yep. And I think that's going to be a thing that we continue to do as we add people to the team is they see what the potential is because it's still growing. And uh, it's not a, okay, I'm going to be here, I'm going to help with this, and I can't see anything past this. It's this could be huge. Yeah. And we talk in those terms and it's true. And yeah, so I think that's, it's, it's um, again, a godsend that uh, the jet was included. On Everyone this. was picked intentionally. Yeah. You know, Barry was brought on because of his knowledge of the land, mm -hmm. his ability to lead us through the logistics. Jeremy was brought on because of his, uh, his approachability. Um, we didn't want a lecturer. Yeah. We didn't want some kind of Bible professor, but we wanted someone who was, was uh, approachable. Jet was brought on, honestly, because he saw the vision and he had the skill set that we need. Um, and, and Dan Kingsley was brought on mm -hmm. on that first year, um, originally as one of our executive producers. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy's a photographer. Yeah. Like, just just brilliant photographer and had been to Israel, I don't know, f 400 times. He'd been, yeah, more than Barry had been yes. at that point. And, um, and so I think we sit around the table and we are going – all right, everybody has something different that they bring to the table. And I, and I still sincerely believe that, that, you know, none of us have talents that really overlap. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you and I, we shoot video, Jet shoots video, but not, not at the – we still – have things that we bring that are different and it kind yes. of makes a full complete package. Yeah. And so, we need that. You know, uh, we don't need two stews. We don't need two yeah. Jeremy's. Um, what we need is, uh, and I love to see how God has used our past work experiences, you know, <laughs> those jobs that we thought this is such a waste of my time. Now I find myself using those skill sets in, in operating Appian Media and everyone brings those special things. Uh, year two, we brought in Danny, mm -hmm. Jet's wife, um, because she is a talented shooter and we needed someone who was experienced with travel and with shooting, yeah. someone who could figure out how to you know work alongside of Jet and uh, keep him under control. It's hard. Yes, yeah, special, very special kind of person. Because he's such a loud, outgoing person. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly the way that I would describe so, him. I think I want to go um, to discussing why it's important to make content about the Bible. Like, why is it even important that Appian Media started creating Bible content? Is it needed? Is it necessary? Right. You know, the Bible, I believe, has the power to really, truly change people. Yeah. But I've realized very early on that video has the power to move people and inspire people, to educate them, to, to motivate them. And if you could use the one to get people engaged with and invested in the other, it, it's, a, it's a perfect combination. And so to be able to use something that we know can be a powerful tool for good, that's why this is so needed. And that's why this is so powerful. Yeah, and we're going to talk about uh, the power of storytelling in a future episode of En-ROADS, but um, you're absolutely right. Um, the power that this medium holds to, um, to tell any message, to tell any story it is amazing. And we've seen so long for the, the world has, has used that uh, effectively yes. to tell their stories and to tell their messages. And, you know, why not use that same technology, that same medium to uh, to tell the story of God? And in fact, you know, the name that we came up with was Appian Media, yes. which it talks about a road. There's a road that's mentioned in the New Testament, uh, the Via Appius, that Paul mentions that Christians came to him via this road. And um, he was encouraged by that. And right, just this know, first century roadway, yeah. right, that yeah. Rome created and I love the the imagery and it's just gotten so embedded in what I believe and what we're trying to do is Rome built this roadway, right? The biggest of its kind, the most impressive of its kind to connect these different nations. And they obviously had plans for this road right. to move their military and, and their own commerce. But it's actually one of the reasons why history tells us that the first century Christians were able to spread the gospel as mm -hmm. quickly and as far as they were able to. Mm -hmm. And so we're using roads of our day, internet and media and all these different avenues that other people built, but we can use to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a brilliant title. It's a brilliant 
name to encapsulate what we're trying to do. Yeah. But, you know, even this podcast, when you look at it, uh, this is just the next iteration of what Appian Media is able to do. You know, because we we started with video in mind because you and I are video people and we, we visuals speak to us. But we know that video is not the only tool that's available today. And so, you know, this is another avenue. And, you know, I think throughout Appian Media's life, it's going to be more than just uh, making content. I think we're going to be ambassadors for using new technologies and, and different content to help tell the, the story of the Bible. Right. And uh, I think that's just as much a part of what we do as creating the content. Right. So inroads, you know, we chose this word. Uh, originally, I thought it simply carried the idea of of making an advance, right? Uh, uh, progressing into a new area. Mm-hmm. But that word actually is usually used in, in a military kind of sense, right? As an, as an army, you are moving into enemy territory and right. making an advance. And that is exactly what we're doing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We are carrying the gospel into enemy territory to advance the uh, advance the purpose of the kingdom. Yeah. God's mission. God's mission. Yeah. And so we are infiltrating into areas that we may never personally be able to step foot mm-hmm. in. But through the roadways that have already been built, mm-hmm. we're able to do it. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll make a confession here. This is confession time. I'm ready. When I, when I started uh, exploring this idea, it was very selfish. It was me saying, you know, I would love to uh, shoot documentaries and I'd love to shoot documentaries internationally because I think that would be a cool thing to do. But very quickly, it became more than that. And I And I... I realized that, man, this is something that is needed. This is not something that I need to just do for me. This is something that is needed. And um, that it, my, my whole mindset changed very early on from um, this would be cool to do to I have to do this. This is so necessary um, because these mediums, these tools are helping people get into their Bible. And study God's word, and uh, you know we see that every day. We see people who message us and send us emails and leave comments on Facebook posts and say, "Look, I opened up my Bible and studied this because I watched your videos," or you know, uh, "I was in a dark place because you know," and then I watched your videos and it changed my whole perspective. And yeah, and like yeah, those are not comments that we are soliciting. These are these are people who are freely giving this right. It's amazing. And you originally, your concept was specifically looking at young people, like yes. a high school class, yeah. right? And we have very quickly realized that it is appealing to people of all ages. Oh, so quickly. Of all denominations, uh, people who have no interest in the Bible previously yeah. are finding this content and are interested in for a variety of reasons. And now I'm realizing more and more this is a tool that I'm able to use for my own kids. Right, and they're not very, they're not very old. And they're not very old. Uh, our oldest right now is five years old. Yeah. And he sits and he watches these. He's glued. And that, it's a tool that, oh boy, I wish I had when I, I was five years old. That, see, that amazes me right there because, you know, you're right. We created this. Uh, the first two series, Following the Messiah and Searching for a King, were created kind of at that high school, college even tipping toward the adult level. Certainly. Uh, and it was it was us um, sitting in Bible classes, and I was sitting at the high school level watching the kids in the high school Bible class zone out because they are so used to using their smartphones every day, all day. When they go to school, they're, uh, they're using technology, and then all of a sudden they came to Bible class on Wednesday night, and we said, put the technology away, <laughs> right. pull out your Bible, and let's study. And they'd be like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? This is not how I learn. And so I saw that in high school level, and I said, well, this is interesting. But like you just mentioned, Kids as young as your son, who are, is five years old, are pulling stuff out of this. And like, 
And then plus we're hearing of, of, of adults that are, you know, they've been Christians for 30, 40, 50 right. years of their life and they're pulling stuff out of this. Yeah. And so in their Bible study, when they do open the book and we want them to, right, we're, we're not trying to replace that, right. that when I read the Bible to my kids, I can see in their eyes, they know this story, right? They've That's seen amazing. it. They've seen it. You know, it. the Good Samaritan, they've seen the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. They remember that scene. Oh, that, oh, it gets me so fired up because those, those are the tools that we are convinced will help people connect with God's word and the gospel. And that really is the, the mission of, of Appian Media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, let's go to a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the mission more and, you know, why it's important that the content is free because we actually have created a really interesting model with that. But uh, first, we're going to talk about our sponsor, which we're thrilled to have. The Inroads podcast is sponsored by Container Solutions, Inc. CSI makes custom engineered packaging solutions for big and small industries, ranging from manufacturing and automotive to military use. Foam, plastic, steel, you name it, and they can make packaging for your product out of just about anything. CSI is a proud sponsor of the Inroads podcast and Appian Media, and we're thrilled to work with them. You can learn more about what they do on their website, ContainerSolutionsInc.com. You can also find more information about our sponsors in this episode's show notes. So let's talk a little bit about the why uh, of Appian Media. What's the mission and you know why is it important that this content is free? I mean... It's kind of a crazy model. That's a very unique model. It's yes. something that we realized very early on no one else was doing. Mm -hmm. Not to the degree that we planned to do an entire series of videos completely free of charge, streamed online. Um, no one was doing that. And why? Why would we do that? Uh, for me, I believe it comes down to we are trying to remove as many barriers as we can from the content. Yeah. So if paying for it is a barrier for you, we want to remove that. If ease of, of access is a barrier to you, we want to make it available on YouTube and on Facebook and on DVD and however we can get it into your hands. We want to remove those barriers because that is the mission. That's the mission of Appian Media. That's the mission of the gospel. Whatever we need to do to connect you with the thing that will change you. Right. Well, and that, and that was the thing when you and I sat down initially, um, we both were like, we, we both had a hesitation to sell the Bible. And I, and I say sell the Bible in a sense that like the content we're creating is about the Bible. And then if we were going to ask people to pay for it, we just kind of felt odd about it because we wouldn't take a Bible out to somebody and say, here's a Bible. Oh, but you can only have it if you pay for it. <laughs> That's not that. That wasn't the mission of the church. That wasn't God. That wasn't God's plan. Was to hey, you can have what I'm offering only if you buy it. In fact, right. it's a gift that we cannot uh, repay him for. And so I think that was kind of the catalyst. Was that we just we wanted to make sure, like you said, it was freely available to everybody. But it's not free to produce. It's not free to produce. And that's the line that we've we've had <sighs> we've, to walk. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we wish that we could just create whatever we want and give it away with no strings attached. And, you know, yeah. we know that that's not possible. So how do we finance it? That's, that's going to be something we talk about later in, in the podcast, but free, it's a uh, unique and interesting business model, but it was key to what we originally crafted mm -hmm. in those early days in those coffee shops. In talking about the mission, you know, specifically the mission is that we want to create biblically accurate content about the Bible and give it to the world for free. So free is even within our mission. And that, Absolutely. that so it's, it's definitely something that's there to stay. You know, so these series aren't free to produce. And if you've watched either Following the Messiah or Searching for a King, you'll know that they have high production value. Uh, there's a lot of research. There's a lot of time and effort that go into them. Some blood, sweat, and tears. Blood, I sweat, saw. and tears that uh, I think we have a couple episodes that talk about the specifics of that blood, sweat, and tears. But <laughs> um, So we've had some very generous backers, donors who have, have given to support this. Um, talk about how people can get involved with Appian Media and you know help continue this. 
Right. Really, it starts by going to the website, mm-hmm. appianmedia.org, and you've got all sorts of information about, about the mission, specifically uh, information about the team. You want to get to know us. Um, go online and watch the content. Yeah. Like I said, it's free. Right. Go on YouTube, pull that up on your smart TV, pull it up on your tablet, however you want to do it, and benefit from the content and learn about how we get this thing made. Um, and let us know, like, let us know how it helped you, how yeah. it impacted you, and how hopefully you're using it to evangelize with other people. Yeah, absolutely. We want feedback on a regular basis. So, well, this has been the Inroads podcast. This is episode one. Episode one. Episode We're just episode getting one. started. We are. And so there's a lot of other great content that we have coming your way in uh, season one of Inroads. Um, but as Craig just mentioned, we want to hear from you. Our listeners, tell us how we can improve the podcast, how we can continue to uh, make content that you want to hear uh, about the Bible. And, you know, honestly, uh, like and subscribe to our channels because as the audience grows, so does the influence. And that's huge. Uh, Appian Media is only able to do what we're able to do because of God and because of our audience. And so we're thankful for that. So Inroads is a production of Appian Media and we're a nonprofit video production company that is 100% crowdfunded. If you're interested in learning more about how you can support Appian Media or watching those free videos, we encourage you to go to our website and watch them there. You can visit appianmedia.org slash inroads for more information. Well, thank you, Craig. I'm glad that we are able to do this. Mm, This is an adventure. I am excited to get started. Uh, We're going to be talking about the uh, Christian media and the the landscape that was set before us when we got this journey started. We are not the first. We are not the first. And I pray that we are not the last. Uh, Yeah. But lessons learned from those before us and uh, hopefully some, some trails that we've blazed perhaps for others coming after us. Sounds great. Thanks, Craig. 